I am calling on all baseball fans to just simply hear me out because, guys, the time has come. The MLB, Major League Baseball, has to have a salary cap. I am done with this. I am tired of it. And I'm going to get into all of that as to why the MLB needs to implement this salary cap to save Major League Baseball. But also, I'm going to talk about some of the Nationals' needs in free agency as also we brought back a 2019 World Series champ. All of that and more after this. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for tuning in to another edition of Locked On Nationals. I'm your host, Ryan Clary, and thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day as I have brought my Nationals fandom slash Nationals obsession in the podcast form with the Locked On Podcast Network where you get your team every single day, and that is the motto that we go by. But you know, I want to get into more of a broader picture with Major League Baseball because I've been thinking about this and I know for a fact that you, wherever you may be listening, you have thought about the same possibility that I'm going to be bringing up and that is Major League Baseball has to start considering a Major League Baseball salary cap. And as I say that, it's simple. We want to see Major League Baseball get a salary cap to level out the playing services. And here's why. NHL, they have a salary cap. The NBA, they have a salary cap. The NFL, they also have a salary cap. And some people are asking, well, this isn't going to prevent the bigger issue, as some people see the bigger issue in baseball, is that smaller market teams just aren't spending the money, which is true. But then again, when you have a lopsided New York Mets squad that just seems to spend whatever they want, and it's clear, the proof is in the pudding. I have the 2023 updated version of the MLB payroll heading into this year. Sitting in first place right now, the New York Mets at $274 million. You know who's in second place? And it's by a lot. The New York Yankees sitting at $207 million. That is a $67 million difference from first place with the New York Mets to second place with the New York Yankees. And you want to see who's dead last right now? And this isn't going to stay here. The Oakland A's, which have about a $4.5 million payroll. That's going to change. But think of this, $274 million allocated to their roster here today as we sit here and we just ask ourselves, what are we doing? When you have a multi, multi, multi-billionaire with Steve Cohen as your owner, that would be amazing. If I'm a New York Mets fan, I am staying put and I do not want a salary cap. But for... The reasons as to why we do want one, just as baseball fans, we need to start considering leveling out, leveling out the playing surfaces. And I say that because it's simple. The smaller market teams just aren't able to get these big fish anymore because they are getting outbid by all these other owners like Steve Cohen, the Steinbrenners, Dodgers, the Angels, all these teams that come together and just throw money at their team all the time, any day of the week, and it is frustrating to say the least. And as Nationals fans, we sit here and we complain about our owners who have a $6.2 billion net worth as of last week, and we aren't spending much money either, and that is just not all right. And truly, if we were to just give a salary cap, whatever that may be, maybe it's $250 million as the salary cap. Let's just say it's that. That allows these smaller market teams to start 
fielding competitive offers for these free agents to even have a chance for the Oakland A's to sign someone. The Pittsburgh Pirates, the Kansas City Royals, these teams that necessarily don't really spend as much money as we would have liked them to can now start spending freely. Because this big fish market that the MLB is stuck into, it's a hamster wheel of the same teams right now. And the New York Mets, they're just the tip of the iceberg. This is just the beginning of the Steve Cohen era. And I say that, and it just sucks to say, because the learners, quite frankly, they could be spending the money to build the team around some of these prospects who will be coming up over the next two years. But to me, there's a bigger issue than that. When you have Steve Cohen in your division, who's as aggressive as any owner in all of sports, it seems like at this point, what can they do? You're going to be outbid by the New York Mets. You're going to be outbid by the New York Yankees, by the Los Angeles Dodgers. These teams that have set in stone their ways, and they're not going to be changing them for anything. The only thing that can change is a salary cap. And with a salary cap, it's going to level out the playing services for all teams initiated. Because that's what we need. Major League Baseball needs to take a step forward like the NFL does with their salary cap. They need to level the playing surface. And also with that, you need to get rid of this MLB lottery system. Because when you have teams who are not bad and it's directly resulted, if you're not going to be spending money, it doesn't mean you're going to stink. But the likelihood of you being a bad team because you can't spend the money, you can't afford these free agents who decide to go to a bigger market team who offers a little bit more money that you can't afford. So now you're penalizing those teams even more when it comes to the salary cap. And that's just not all right with me. That doesn't sit right with me. And especially, maybe I am biased. I'll admit it. I am. Because the Nationals are in a reboot, retool, rebuild, whatever you want to call it. And we aren't spending the money to get any better. And there seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel for this situation that the Nationals are in. Not only the Nationals, but all these small small market teams like the Royals, like the A's, like the Orioles like the Pirates, all these teams that don't really spend the money. And it's not necessarily their fault because let's be honest, teams will outbid them. The big fish will eat the small fish. That's how life works in general with anything. So I think the MLB has a serious issue on their hands that they're going to need to clean up. And in my opinion, the only way that they can clean this up is by implementing a salary cap to Major League Baseball. Not only is it going to be a cap on how much you can spend, but there will be a floor on what you have to spend as well. And that's going to clean up a whole lot of this mess because, hey, I can't have Steve Cohen dropping millions and millions of dollars on these free agents and nothing happens for us. We're getting left in the dust. And it's just not all right anymore. Something has to change. Something has to happen. I know they just negotiated a new CBA this past year, which led to a lockout for the first month of the season, or for the first two weeks of the season. But hey, this is something that needs to happen now. And I'm actually very passionate about this, as it got me saying, because last night when I saw the headline to where Carlos Correa was going to be going to the New York Mets and they were showing interest, if they were to sign Carlos Correa to that huge deal that eventually the San Francisco Giants took with him, that would have been the end of it. That would have solidified my decision. But even then, just the threat of that is absolutely ludicrous. And that is something the MLB has to fix up to save the integrity of baseball, in my opinion. That's what it comes down to. Salary cap, something that needs to happen. Not today. It should have happened yesterday. And that is my point with the MLB salary cap. One, level the playing field. That's what it is. 
That is all I want. Level the playing field and see what happens just after that. But I'm going to be getting into some Nats needs in free agency. As we know, the Nationals haven't really been spending too much. But then again, we still have some needs left. J. Mayor Candelario, great. Trevor Williams, nice. We need more. I'm going to get into that. But before, I'm going to tell you about my friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and the World Cup. We've got it all on BetOnline.net. And as I've been saying, your boy doesn't know too much about soccer. And the FIFA World Cup is on as we sit here and probably as you're listening to this very show. So what I do, I just look up betonline.net and they give me every statistic that I need to know to make to make a proper great bet in order to splash some cash and have some fun watching these World Cup games. And if you love sports pods, you can find those at Bet Online as well, as they are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. And now we get into some of the Nationals' needs in free agency, as this is something to where I've been talking about a lot. I want the Nationals to spend. I want them to be aggressive because there's a trend in baseball. The more you spend, probably the more competitive that you will be. And I feel like that's something to where still lays out today. And the Nationals still have some needs. I still think right now, as we sit here today on December 14th, the Nationals still need a corner outfielder of some sort. And there are guys out there. You're not going to be getting Brandon Nimmo as he signed back with the New York Mets. We are never in play for him anyways. But then again, what will you be going out there to see? Wayne Thomas, which is fine. Our team MVP this past year. Victor Robles. Who will be playing right field or even left field? Because that's the really the need that we need right now. I think starting pitching, I do envision us signing someone else to the starting pitching rotation. Is it a major league contract deal? Who knows? But I do envision them signing someone else. But for as far as a corner outfielder perspective goes, I think the Nationals still need a corner outfielder. And where can we find that? And it's a simple one. Someone I've talked about plenty of times on this show. Joey Gallo. We still need someone like Joey Gallo as the Nationals were one of the worst home, worst home run hitting teams this past year after trading away Josh Bell and Juan Soto. The Nationals, they need a power bat. And you know who needs some opportunities to prove himself? Joey Gallo. Was as to why maybe he would want to come here and as well as why the Nationals would want him to come here is opportunity. Guys who are going to be on one-year deals who are cheap need the opportunity to prove themselves as Joey Gallo was once an all-star. He was a first-round pick. He was a mammoth home run hitter. And guys, as the shift is getting banned this season, this season, Joey Gallo will even have a bigger impact this upcoming season. He's going to be better. He's a good fielder, a good solid left fielder or right fielder, wherever you may decide to put him. He can also play first base for you as well, as the Nationals still sort of have a hole at first base. Because J. Mayor Candelario is thinking in his head that he's going to be the everyday third baseman for the Washington Nationals. I'm not buying that. But right now is about what we need for a corner outfielder spot. Joey Gallo makes all the sense in the world for the Nationals. Yes, he had a down year. Yes, it seems like everyone wants to stay away from him with a six-foot stick. But not this Nationals team. This Nationals team needs help, and they need it now. 
And what do we really need? We need a power bat. And in particularly, we need a lefty, a lefty like Joey Gallo, who will be able to hit 450 foot home runs. Obviously, you don't get extra runs for how many feet you hit a home run. But this is something to where it is a must need for the Nationals. And as to why Joey Gallo would want to come here, it's simple opportunity. Who's going to be, who's Joey Gallo going to be benched for? Maybe in September for Robert Hassel, if he were to get the call up to the major leagues, depending on how he looks throughout this season. But other than that, who in their right mind would bench Joey Gallo and who would replace him? Joey Gallo needs the opportunities to prove himself. And also, it's a win-win situation. The Nationals, they're not spending much. They are way below the average payroll in Major League Baseball. Joey Gallo will cost probably around $12, $15 million. We'll see. And plus, besides that, besides the opportunities, the Nationals need to be aggressive. They need to have guys like this. This is the market that they should be killing it in on one-year prove-it deals. Kind of what Cody Bellinger got with the Chicago Cubs. And Joey Gallo fits this market to where the Nationals need to be in. As I've said it before, the Nationals aren't going to be shopping at Louis Vuitton. We're going to be shopping at Marshalls. And when we're shopping at Marshalls, we're going to be shopping in the clearance rack there. And Joey Gallo is in that clearance rack there for someone who was an all-star, someone who can hit 40 home runs a year if he's healthy. And especially the way lefties hit at Nationals Park, he could end up putting 30 home runs out this year, even after all the struggles that he's had the last few years. So to me, this makes the most sense in the world for the Nationals to actually attack and go after Joey Gallo, as this is just a no-brainer move. You need to sell the fan base on something. You need to have someone to put a picture on for a billboard. Joey Gallo fits those boxes as well. He's a name. People want to buy his jersey, and people would get excited for him, for the possibility of just him bouncing back with the Nationals and then flipping him at the trade deadline for a younger MLB prospect, as we are still in a rebuild after all. And in those scenarios, it's a win-win. Give him a one-year prove-it deal, If he stinks, so be it. If he's good, you flip him at the deadline and you get another prospect and you keep on building on to the future that the Nationals think that they have. And that's really what it comes down to for me. Because all this no spending stuff is fine, I guess, if you're in a rebuild. But someone like Joey Gallo, man, would that be tough. Also, I've mentioned in the past, like third baseman Brandon Drury from the San Diego Padres. At this point, it doesn't seem too realistic after signing Candelario. I would still love Brandon Drury, but also I think there's some options at third base in our market already. Carter Keyboom, Jake Alou from uh, AAA in Rochester. So I think the Nationals can potentially fill that gap within what they have now. But even then, I'd love to see them go after and get someone like Drury, get someone especially like Joey Gallo, because that's what we need. We need power, power, and more power. And that's what it comes down to for me. So thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Like I was saying earlier, the Washington Nationals brought back a 2019 World Series champ And I'm going to get into that right after this. And that Washington National, that 2019 World Series champion, is big city Matt Adams. Hey, don't trash big city. Big city is someone who won has plenty of postseason experience as he was with the Nationals for that 2019 run. He spent 
2012 all the way through 2016 with the St. Louis Cardinals. He's been with the Braves. He's been with the Braves in 2020. This is someone who has plenty of postseason experience, and yes, he has not had a major league at bat since 2021. And this is not going to be some world beater. This is not someone who maybe even could be on the big league roster. He was signed to a minor league contract. This is someone who, in spring training, he's going to be a mentor to some of these younger guys. He's going to be someone that you ask questions to. And all of that is smart. I'm not going to trash the team for signing Matt Adams. One, 2019 World Series legend. Did he do much in the World Series? Nothing. But with that being said, he was on that team that eventually won the World Series. I'm all for a little nostalgia. I'm all for it. So I'm happy that Matt Adams is back. And then also, we haven't really talked about this too much in the offseason, but the Nationals have, they or they did sign Sean Doolittle to a minor league contract as well to bring him back as he sees the Washington Nationals as him has his own base back when the Nationals traded for him in 2017 when we sent a lot of pro- – we sent Blake Trinan and a couple other guys to the Oakland A's for Ryan Madsen and Sean Doolittle. And Sean Doolittle has been a rock in this bullpen. Obviously, last year he had some struggles. He couldn't stay healthy. But when we saw him healthy, he was honestly pretty good. Someone you can rely on. Someone you can maybe flip at the deadline again and get something for him if he does pitch well. So my eyes will be set on that as we are bringing back some of the old band. Like, hey, we got the band back together, which is awesome. Because I'm all for a little nostalgia. I'm all for bringing leadership into this clubhouse to help these younger guys build and really just get to their ultimate goal, which is back to being a winning baseball club. And that's just what it comes down to for me. And I do think the Nationals can get there whenever that day comes. Is that day going to be coming soon? Are we going to be winning anytime soon from now? Probably not. But then again, the fact that we're bringing these guys in, the fact that the Nationals are acknowledging that we do need veteran leadership after trading away Josh Bell and Juan Soto, Ryan Zimmerman's not here anymore, Steven Strasburg is in and out of this clubhouse, Patrick Corbin is, he's not really the the leader type. I think he's a little more on the quiet side. But then again, you can ask Patrick Corbin questions as well because that's so important to have leadership in this clubhouse, especially in a rebuild. You don't think C.J. Abrams is going to have a couple questions here and there? A young 22-year-old, someone who, I mean, just is starting to grow facial hair? He's going to have some questions for these guys. Key Bear Ruiz, Josiah Gray. All these guys, they want to know what a winning clubhouse feels like. Matt Adams, Sean Doolittle, those guys know what it's like. So bring them in. They know the Nationals Foundation. They know what Davey wants from them. They know what Mike Rizzo wants from them. And they know what this fan base wants out of them as well. No one better in baseball to bring in than those two guys to help at least during spring training to be a little mentor to these guys answer some questions, be a face of the franchise in that sense, and just be a team leader. Because since Ryan Zimmerman left, we haven't really had that. Juan Soto was a team leader. Josh Bell was a great team leader as well. But then again, Juan Soto was here, obviously, during the 2019 year, and he was kind of someone who took that leadership role. Same with Josh Bell. I think Josh Bell was probably the man in the clubhouse this past season. But when you are missing those two guys now, it is a thin line from people who just don't really know what it's like to be a Washington National and don't really know what Davey Martinez wants out of them. So all of that is important to me when it's all said and done. And I do believe the Nationals made the right decision bringing back Matt Adams and as well as Sean Doolittle this past season. So thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. 
And that'll do it for me today. This was a fun little show as I was talking about the MLB salary cap and what I want them to do with that. But obviously, nothing set in stone. And I think it is a far-fetched item to even think that the Nationals in Major League Baseball could come to a conclusion of an MLB salary cap. But with that being said, I think it's something that is important for Major League Baseball to do. You guys have a good day, and I will talk to you tomorrow.